All right, so this is just a very, very short and simple story. And it's about basically banking and credit card use, which is right up my alley. So um, Apple gets into the savings game as it deepens financial push. Company will offer a savings account option for its cardholders, done in partnership with Goldman Sachs. Now, as you know, I have an Apple card. I'm thinking a lot of you who listen to this, I guess you could call it a podcast, have Apple card because a lot of you have iPhones. And as you've probably been noticing, iPhone pretty much has the absolute best camera and software of any smartphone, regardless what you may hear. You see, they want to talk about these folding smartphones as if having a phone that folds makes any sense or any difference whatsoever, which it doesn't. But the bottom line is, I'm not here to argue about that. My point is, I love the Apple devices and the ecosystem I refuse to leave until I absolutely see something better come along. And when you're somebody who can spend $1,750 on an iPhone 14 one terabyte Pro Max, you can basically choose any option you want. But I continue to choose Apple because I know it's the best. So um, I use Apple Card for all types of things. The last time I used it was actually to purchase this phone. The only other thing I truly use it for is my warranties for cars. So if I have an extended warranty, I'll have the extended warranty set up as a payment plan. It will go every month to the card, which is good because it gives the card exercise. Because as you know, if you have a credit card that you don't use, sometimes the bank will close that credit card. Closing that credit card account will hurt your credit, and I have a perfect 850 credit score to protect. So warranties, and I usually don't really put anything else on the card except for Apple products because Apple gives you 3% off on the card. As it stands right now, I only have about $99 worth of Apple cash built up. The Apple Cash is sitting there, not really doing anything, not generating revenue. So what Apple has decided to do is for people who use their Apple Card regularly, they want to be able to offer you these accounts, a high-yield savings account or a higher-yield savings account, in order for you to take your Apple Cash and actually do something with it. They want you to be able to generate revenue. Apple Card doesn't really belong to Apple. It was designed by Apple, but it's really a Goldman Sachs MasterCard with the Apple logo on it. So this bank account, as they're saying, Apple Incorporated is deepening its involvement in the world of financial services. The consumer electronics company plans to let Apple Card users park their daily cash in a high-yield Goldman Sachs savings account, according to a Thursday press release. Cardholders can choose to open the savings account and have their daily cash. The company's form of cashback rewards put in the account automatically once the product rolls out over the coming months. There are no fees, minimum deposits, or minimum balances with the new savings account. Apple added in the release that users would be able to manage their savings accounts through Apple's wallet app and that they would have the option to change where their daily cash goes at any time. Apple had made various forays into financial services, including with the Apple Card, which is issued by Goldman Sachs Group. The company has also been seeing growing traction with Apple Pay, a mobile wallet that allows people to make contactless payments in stores and make card payments online. The company said earlier this year that it planned to get into the buy now, pay later game by letting Apple Pay users make purchases and installments. Apple teased this development at its WWDC developer event in June, but the Apple Pay later feature has yet to materialize. Apple shares are ahead 1.5% in Thursday's midday trading. The stock has fallen 3.5% over the past three months as the Dow Jones Industrial Average, negative 1.34%, has dropped 3.3%. So um, basically, buy now, pay later 
there are a few companies that have gotten into buy now, pay later. But for the most part, buy now, pay later has already been dominated by the credit card itself. Visa and Master credit cards linked to banks already dominate buy now, pay later. So buy now, pay later basically takes the form of people using a credit card and holding high interest credit card debt. So Apple has the ability to pretty much marginalize buy now, pay la- buy now and pay later services simply because Apple has such a wide ecosystem across its devices. You can use your Apple Watch, you can use your iPhone in order to uh, pay for things in general. However, once you have the Apple Card that allows you to use whatever they consider to be their buy now and pay later service. So... I think this is a good thing for Apple. Um, The biggest problem that I have with Apple Card is that it doesn't offer uh, travel rewards. I regularly use my Capital One Venture Card, and I use that for basically everything. Now, my Apple Pay, I use on a daily basis to buy like lunch, possibly to buy dinner, to buy fuel. Wait, no, in fact, I don't use my Apple Card for gas, typically. I actually use it for, you know, car maintenance, but I don't use it for gas. Um, I use my Capital One Venture for gas. Now, if Apple edged out the competition by offering high-yield savings and by offering uh, better rewards specifically for travel, I would definitely change my behavior and use the Apple Card more often. But uh, as it stands... I don't see enough yet to change my spending behavior and uh, use my Apple card rather than the Capital One Venture card. Now, this is it's a good idea, and I'm glad that they're doing it, but I'm going to have to actually see where it goes first. Now, I don't mind, even if they, if they offered it right now, because when Apple does stuff, what you'll end up getting is you get a notification on your phone that says that something's available. So if they said, yeah, well, guess what? You've got like almost $100 in Apple cash, and you could put that in this high-yield savings account right now. Oh, yeah, I'd probably definitely click over on it, because other than that, I wouldn't be using my Apple cash for anything frivolous. I usually would wait until there's like a vacation expense or something that I'm, uh, for example, if you borrow money from somebody or if you need to pay somebody money, like let's say you go out with some friends and um, you'll, you'll split the bill, but you don't have cash. So you said, okay, I'm going to Apple pay it to you. You can take out of your Apple cash in order to pay your friend. That actually happened to me when I had bought a PlayStation 5 and I had to pay the person using Apple Pay. And I think I had $25 worth of Apple cash. So when I paid him the money that I owed him, it sucked the money out of my Apple cash first, and then it took the money from my bank account. So that was the supplement. So the person got my Apple cash, which was money that I didn't really feel, and, and this is one of the reasons why you really should get in the habit of using a credit card for all of your purchases. I've always taught you that in order to build your credit, you need to use your credit card for all your purchases, but you need to pay it back immediately. And this way you net the credit card points or you net the travel points or whatever it is you're getting. Um, if you get into that habit, you actually get something back for the money you spend. If you spend cash, you get nothing back. Spending on cash is a, is a fool's errand. Now, I know there's people online, these fake gurus who try to tell you, oh, yeah, well, you don't need to play the credit card game. Yeah, well, if you can really see into their background, they pretty much have nothing. There's only like two or three types of people. There's the people who are these fake gurus who have money because they inherited money, so they think that they can go cash and carry. Then you have the people who are just talking shit, and they have absolutely nothing, but they refuse to play the credit card game because chances are they either went bankrupt or they screwed up their credit so bad that they don't have it anyway. And then third, there are the people who will tell you this stuff because they're just building a YouTube account. I've already built a YouTube account, so I don't need to tell you anything. But what I say 
is that it makes more sense to establish credit, to build your credit, to maintain your credit. Nowadays, people are desperate for better credit. They're desperate for it. That's the reason why they listen to just about anything anybody says. And they're desperate for it because they want things that they can't get. They want a car with a low interest rate. Federal Reserve raised interest rates. They can't get the interest rate that would make it low enough for them to be able to afford it. So what ends up happening is that person who walks into Audi for a Q5 ends up leaving Audi and going over to Hyundai and getting a Santa Fe because that's what they can afford. What it also means is that people who are shopping for houses, well, if you can't get the house you want because they tell you that you have a 6% interest rate incoming and then that makes the monthly payments completely unaffordable, those people, well, right now, a 6% is pretty much the lowest you're going to get, maybe a 5.85 if you're lucky. But for the most part, this is due to the fact that most people's credit is hurting. Either they have bad credit background or they have bad credit usage for some reason, or maybe they have high credit balances. It varies from person to person. I've stressed that you need to perfect your credit. I've stressed that you need to pay off all of your balances and you need to pump those credit FICO score numbers as high as they'll possibly go. But um, that's basically the game. That's basically what the game is. And now you can see that most of these powerful corporations are pivoting so that they can try to take advantage of this market as much as possible in order to make as much profit as they possibly can. The buy now, pay now, later, the buy now, pay later services such as a firm. I had looked into a firm before and I wasn't really happy with their rates. So I basically ignored them. I just looked into it. And um, I, I applaud Apple. I like the fact that I, you know, right now I have an Apple card that has like over $12,000 as the uh, spending limit. And you can always ask them to raise your limit. But I really like the way they do business. I like the ecosystem. I like the ease of being able to, to just walk over to a terminal and use my Apple Watch in order to spend money in a pinch. I don't have to carry $10,000 on me. I can just use my watch and literally spend $10,000 if need be. Uh, that's pretty powerful. That's pretty effective. And um, I, I like the service and I will continue to use it. And uh, once this uh, service here materializes with the high yield savings account, I wouldn't mind starting another savings account with Apple. So uh, you can tell me what you think about this, and uh, you can just say it in the comments.